I'm Joe from As a Joe Flies. And I'm Leslie from Trips with Tykes. And welcome back to Disney Deciphered, a monumentous occasion because we have four people recording on the same episode for the first time ever. Let's get right to it. DCL Duo, you are here with us today. We love your work, all the Disney Cruise Line work that you do and everything that you do for the community. Leslie, we'd like to start with a bunch of plugs. Why don't you introduce our guests and then we'll get straight to the plugs. All right. We have Brian Flock and Sam Canner, the real life dynamic duo in life and and in podcasting. (laughs) They've got a fantastic DCL podcast and you guys started this during the pandemic, right? (laughs) Great time to start a podcast about cruising when it was shut down worldwide, (laughs) but you've really just grown it into just like quite a following, so much great content. And we are glad to have you back. You were on an episode with just me Gosh, maybe even a couple of years ago, and this is the first time all four of us have been on an episode. So welcome. Thanks Thanks. for having us. We're super happy to be here. Super excited. Yeah, as you mentioned, we've got a podcast. We also have a vlog on YouTube. We, We do more audio content than video content, but we have both. And we do two shows a week, usually a live show over YouTube, as well as just an audio show every week. Well, I'm impressed by how much you put out on many different platforms. So folks, go follow that. Give them a subscribe on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube if you are curious about anything Disney Cruise Line. Yeah, so the first voice that you heard was Sam. Yes, oh, sorry. Yeah, let's let them hear your voice just so we know who's who. I know it can get complicated. You can check us out on youtube.com slash at Disney Decipher. This will be on YouTube if you're getting confused. But Brian, yes. take the mic. Yeah, you know, this is typical actually on our show. So uh, Sam does a <laughs> lot of the talking and I just kind of steer things directionally. So uh, this is safe territory for me. <laughs> how dare How dare you, Brian? How dare you? On behalf of Sam, I say, how dare you? I love it, Joe. Thanks Before, for sticking up for me. <laughs> of course, of course. That's what I'm here for. Now, we have you guys on because you visited Lookout Key Way more than anybody else that I know of, and I think possibly at all in the first two weeks besides cast members, of course. Before we get to that, a quick plug for ourselves. If you'd like to support us, check us out on patreon.com slash Disney Deciphered. And you can also do a one-time donation. And so I'm going to do a quick shout out in honor of the Disney Cruise Line community, Christy P. or Christy Puddock of the DCL podcast recently gave us a one-time donation. So shout out to you, Christy. I know for sure you're listening to this episode, which is why I'm giving you a shout out here. Thank you so much. Now let's talk a little bit about, you know, before we get to Lookout Key and how many dozen times you've been there, <laughs> it's only been open for a month. Why don't we talk about, Leslie alluded to you all starting the podcast during the pandemic. Really quickly, tell us a little bit about your history and your Disney Cruise Line background. You know, your bona fides. We started cruising Disney Cruise Line in 2018. It was for my 40th birthday. We had reached out to a friend of Sam's who worked in the cruise industry and asked, I sort of said, I I enjoyed cruising when I was younger. I want to do one again. I want to do one for my birthday. Who should we sail? And he said, hands down, you got to go on Disney. So we did. He came with us along with some other friends. And I would say from the moment we stepped on board and they announced our names, we were hooked. And uh, we got hooked in a big way. So we have done 20, well, I have done 28 Disney cruises since 20, January of 2018. Uh, Sam is hovering at 26, I believe, because I had a couple of cruises in there that were, she was not able to go on. And yeah, we decided to start a podcast just because I actually had been on a few shows and felt like we had kind of a different voice and perspective in some of the existing shows that were out there that we wanted to offer to the community. Fast forward to 2024, we're over 440 episodes of podcasting in since 2018 and yeah publishing regularly twice a week and uh, just had our first podcast cruise on the disney magic the lighthouse point had about 50 people sailing with us uh across 20 staterooms and uh, it was a blast we got to record live with a special permission from disney and animators palette so they set us up and we did a live show or not a live show. We did a recorded show before a studio audience, I should say. A live audience. Yeah. yeah. So that has been it, the pinnacle, on the, the OG pinnacle ship. of podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's on the OG sh- ship in the OG like rotational dining room. So it was really an incredible experience to do that. But yeah, it's Brian. Brian came up with this harebrained idea in like February of 2020 when cruising wasn't yet interrupted. 
And then we decided to start with an adults only trip to Disneyland, actually, which was like the weekend before the world shut down. So we actually recorded our first episode, which wasn't even cruise content because we just didn't have a cruise, you know, scheduled at that point. Yeah, right before the world shut down. So really, really fortuitous time. It actually worked out, I think, very well in our favor, though, because people were wanting to talk about cruising because they couldn't actually get on boats. And so we were able to get some really great guests. And I think it helped us grow because people had downtime. They weren't going out to parties and movies and dinners and all of that. So they were looking for content about cruising. Well, we're glad you survived that rocky start and (laughs) hung in because we're all the better for it. So let's go ahead and turn to Lookout Key. And it's it's a little bit of a mouthful, (laughs) Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. I always am afraid I'm going to get it wrong, and I probably will several times during this episode. But for folks who, like, really haven't been following the Disney news, you know, a lot of our listeners follow World or Land, but really maybe haven't even been on a a DCL trip before – what is Lookout Key? Where is it? Like the basic of the basics. Let's start there. Yeah. So Lookout Key is on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas. And Disney's very particular in how we describe it. It's not their new private island destination. It's their new island destination because the island itself is not new. The destination is new. And uh, we can chat about this more a little bit later, but it's not entirely private. So so Lookout Key sits at the, I believe it's the northern tip or the southern tip of Eleuthera. Southern tip. Southern tip of Eleuthera. Southern tip. And Disney has developed it into basically what is their new version of Castaway Key, but with some serious upgrades and differences. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, a resort, essentially, that their cruise ships decide to you know stop at. Usually once a cruise, not all of the ships, not all of the itineraries, obviously, but a lot of the itineraries that go to the Bahamas will stop at either Castaway Key or Lookout Key. Occasionally, there are itineraries that stop at both. And that's basically, it's similar to a private island experience because it is really designed for the Disney Cruise Line guest. And so everything is inclusive as far as, you know, food and beach chairs and umbrellas and and all that sort of stuff. The only thing not included is really, you know, alcohol. But it's a really lovely beach environment. Let's put that at the very and it's very basic. Got it. And I know you guys have sailed a couple of other cruise lines, as have we. Some of these other cruise lines have private islands, but they have a ton of upcharges. And that is not the Disney way, as I understand it. Like you say, just alcohol, but really pretty much everything else other than maybe like an shore excursion style thing would be would be included. Right. Correct. Snorkel snorkel gear and bike rentals are upcharges. But other than that, and alcohol, there are even even soda and soft serve ice cream is included and all the food is included. So it's really just excursion. So if you want to do a boat excursion or there's some some ecotourism nature type excursions, those are all extras. But those are bookable ahead of time through Disney Cruise Line. So very much like Castaway Key, really quickly before I get selfishly. I'm going to be on Lookout Key next week, like about a week from when we're recording. Awesome. My friends have asked me whether the bike rentals are up yet on Lookout Key. I must know. Do you know? Because I I had read or seen that the bike path isn't completely done. I told them I'm guessing it's not done yet, but I figure I ask you guys. It's two things. It was not done when we were there, and I don't believe it is now. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and actually there's a more fundamental problem. They didn't have all the bikes in yet, so... It was going to take them about 60 days to get the bikes fully in. They have some of the e-bikes there for an e-bike excursion that they're running, but the bicycles themselves, they basically told us that it was going to take 60 days from opening to get them all there. And to be clear, I'm asking about like the grab-and-go bikes, not like an excursion, yes. but like yeah. the bikes that you mentioned. Yeah. You know, it's an upcharge. You can rent them, yeah. and you can go. Now, really quickly, as of right now, the majority of sailings to Lookout Key are the Disney Magic. That's what we're sailing on. There are on the schedule loaded. You know, the Magic's going there a lot. The Fantasy's going there sometimes on double dips, some other ones here and there. But for the most part, or let's let's put it this way. If you want to go to Lookout Key or try one of the Wish Class ships, you're going to have to either take two cruises or pick one or yep. the other. Correct. Now, the reason why I'm saying all that is because 
pretty much that's all I know. And then the rest <laughs> is going to be for you guys. So, I mean, where do you want to go from here? You know, let's start with this. We teased it a little bit. You've been a few times. You were on the inaugural. Like, how many times have you guys visited Lookout Key so far? My number was three. Do I have that correct? Or am you I are off partially four? correct. I've right. So I've been three and Brian has been four. So Brian actually went on the preview cruise on the Disney magic. We did not go on the fantasies inaugural cruise to look out key. Brian went on the preview cruise, which was actually the sailing before. So the first sailing that any Disney ship made to look out key that included both media and paid passengers, Brian was on. And then the two of us were on the next sailing that the that the Disney Magic went to to Lookout Key, which was a DVC sailing, we actually went there twice, and then we had a back to back cruise. So the very next cruise we went on, which was our podcast cruise, a three night sailing, went to Lookout Key once. So Brian has been four times. I have been and, three times. And I was told at the time that we I made my fourth visit, we were actually my friend and I who had been on all four cruises. We're probably the first people to visit as guests four times and may have been the first people to visit four times on the ships because the fantasy came in, the magic had not visited. Like, it, it was this weird thing. I'm sure that record will fall soon, but I'm holding on to it for as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, cl- definitely hang- cling to that as long as you can. That's that's very impressive. So what we're going to get into next is talking about the pros and the cons of this. But before we do that, I kind of want to understand from a broad perspective, what are the key differences as you see them between Lookout Key and Castaway Key? Because everybody's making these comparisons. Like, can you sort of from, from a high level of gen- generality explain the differences for folks? I had a, f- uh, a friend that we sailed with who I think described this very, very well, which is Castaway Key is about Disney and Lookout Key is about the Bahamas. And so if you step back and have that framing, then a lot of the differences start to make some more sense. So Castaway Key, one, is truly like a Disney leased, practically owned island. They have the whole thing. They control the whole thing. Eleuthera is not something they control all of. They have a portion of it that they control. Just up from Lookout Key is Princess Key. So you will see Carnival and other ships over there for Princess Key. And you can take excursions that will take you off Disney property and onto the island. The island is inhabited. It is a tourist destination. There is a lot of other stuff you can do on this island. Fundamentally, though, they are both beach vacations. This is not going to be Coco Key, where there's like huge water parks and, and freshwater pools and all of that stuff. They are beach vacations. The core difference for the beaches, I would say, between Castaway and Lookout, Castaway is protected coves for the most part, Whereas Lookout is open ocean. You have beach facing out to ocean. So it's like, you know, going to a beach in Florida, basically. That has pros and cons, but that's a key difference. I think the other big difference is, as I said up front, the difference between Disney and the Bahamas. At Lookout Key, they are really trying to infuse the location with the culture of the Bahamas. From the music, to the food to the introduction of the new entertainment that they have on the island with Junkanoo and the cultural center and some edutainment opportunities that they have. They're really trying to bring the Bohemian culture into the experience and showcase that culture and did a lot of partnerships with local artists and others to sort of infuse that culture in. Castaway Key is much more of like a, you know, a contrived kind of celebration of like being castaways, you know, and so the architecture between the two islands is very different, but you'll find a lot of similar offerings. They don't have the equivalent of a Pelican Plunge, but what they do have is a more freshwater experience called Rush Out, Gush Out for the kids. It has some slides and water play areas. They have a kids club on both islands. They have eateries on both islands, although they're set up a little bit differently on Lookout Key. Obviously stores on both islands, although I'll say the merchandise offering on Lookout Key seems superior to that of Castaway Key. At Lookout Key, they also have a warehouse on the island so they can keep things in stock and they're constantly restocking, whereas at Castaway Key, they're you know dependent upon the ship to bring them things. So that that's kind of at a high level. The difference is they both have an adult area. They both have cabanas, you know, those sorts of things. So a lot of the amenities are similar, Mm -hmm. but the feel and look of these two places is sort of very different, in my opinion. 
Yeah. And and there are significant differences in the layout. You know, Castaway is, I'll say, it, more compact than Lookout Key. Lookout Key is a bigger piece of land that they're developing, I would say. there's part, it, A lot of it is still under construction, and you can see that when you go. You'll see that, Joe, when you get on the tram and you take the tram from Mabrika Cove to the family beach areas, you, you will pass by areas of construction. So you can tell that the area that Disney has is quite large and pr- likely bigger than what they have at Castaway, or at least likely bigger than what they've developed at Castaway. They actually have a much bigger piece of land than they have developed, but they've made a lot of agreements with the Bahamians to leave a lot of the sort of natural habitat preserved. I think that's really evident in the pier. So that's one difference Brian has yet to talk about that I'll just mention briefly. You've got a pier at Castaway and people don't really talk about the pier very much. You've got a pier at Lookout Key and people are talking about it a whole lot, right? So it's about a half mile long pier. It It's kind of curved and it juts out all the way into the ocean. So the walk from the ship to uh, where the tram is because you have to take the tram so this is another difference you have to take the tram to get to the family beaches or to get to serenity bay you don't if you have a cabana at the a family beach cabana is actually right there in mabrika cove but if you are the vast majority of people are going to have to get on that tram and take it over to the main beach areas and it's at about an eight minute tram ride i actually clocked it at like eight minutes 25 seconds something like that so it's a longer trip to get to your destination let's put it that way the first the half mile walk and then an eight minute tram ride and so it's a mile it's a mile from the tram stop to the tram stop is a oh mile. yes and they will right. not to, to, to underscore this point you they can't will walk not it. let you walk it currently because they still have active kind of construction going on i, I want to be very clear though on the active construction it's not that the spaces that guests are using are under construction it's that they are continuing yes. to build out more things on the island and joe to your point about the ships that are stopping there if you actually take a hard look at the itineraries not as many stops are happening at lookout key right now as are happening at castaway key and i think that's in part because they're continuing to finish out some of the build of the island and i also suspect this was phase one of a master plan and there is going to be a phase two so uh, feeling the stops will be kept somewhat artificially low so that they can do work in between and that was evident even between the preview crews the first preview crew stop and some of the stops later they like paved an entire road for the trams it was not paved the first time that we were there so yeah yeah i'm gonna zapruder film the b-roll thank you so much for sharing (laughs) b-roll with me some video with me and compare you know when i go there next week you know how much construction has been done now you brought up the pier i just want to note two things number one the reason for the pier which you all didn't mention but of course i know that you know is because one of the agreements that disney made with the bahamian government was to protect the coral around eleuthera which is very noble so a lot of ink was spilled digital ink was spilled (laughs) over the pier and it being long and it's a tough walk and all that but it was for good reason and hopefully you know the coral can stay healthy because of that that's the first thing and then the second thing i want to note is they do have golf carts my understanding is as still as of now and i we may need one because my son did his ankle like a couple weeks oh, ago so no. we're not sure yeah. we're like we're like you know 50-50 about how he's going to be i think he's going to be okay you know kids heal fast but you know i'm ready to ask but my understanding is as of you know, when you guys were there for sure, and I think still as I'm going to be there next week, you just when you get on board, you can't pre-ask for any golf cart rides or anything like that. But when you get on board, you can ask. And earlier, the better. I like to kind of go late onto the islands to kind of reverse the traffic. Mm-hmm. But I think for the golf carts on Lookout Key right now, earlier, the better, because, you know, once they get down there, you know, they're kind of not coming back. And they even have wagons and stuff for you yeah. to drag your stuff. But same thing. Once they get down there, you know, you're going to have trouble getting it back now i think the most useful thing is to compare lighthouse and castaway a little bit but before we get to that might as well get the other hot button topic off of the i know exactly what you're gonna talk about joe (laughs) so there was a lot of consternation about there was quite a fair number of six-legged friends flies at true two and true two two which is the name of the food places the barbecues at lookout key I think even when you were all there, 
Sam, your third time, Brian, your fourth time. The problem had already been mitigated quite a bit, and I have not seen anything about it online in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking, I, I actually, you know, I hate flies, and <laughs> I just, I cannot stand them. Yeah. One fly in the house, and I spend 20 minutes trying to kill them. That being said, I'm not sure I want to know what, Disney had to do to take care of the fly problem because <laughs> I know how hard they're deal with to deal with in my own life. I cannot imagine, you know, what I don't even want to know what kind of it's what actually, kind of chemicals were involved here. It's actually a fairly tame response. So because we 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 talk to cast and and understand what they have done. So the primary thing that they did was they they covered food. That was that was step one. Step two is they got air moving around the food as much as possible to kind of prevent the flies from congregating. But the third thing they did that we've heard about is that they have sprayed fly attracting pheromones around the island away from guest spaces to try and get the flies yeah. to congregate in particular areas of the island and stay there. Probably at Princess Key. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and look, the genesis of the problem was twofold. One is it, when you get there, Joe, you'll see they ripped out a lot of vegetation to do the build and then they've replanted. So a lot of the, the environment was just disturbed by construction and continues to be disturbed. The second thing that we found out is they never, like, they never really, people should know this, with the preview crews and the inaugural crews, they, it's not like they took a ship offline and tested. Like, <laughs> they, they showed up with the magic for the preview crews, and we were literally the first guests of any quantity to set foot on that island. And so when they set food out in the buffets, that was the first time they had really set food out in those quantities. And that's sort of, for them, when things became really apparent that they were going to have a problem. And to Disney's credit... They recognized it immediately. They owned up to it unsolicited in conversations I had with cast members on board who were like in sales for Disney. They were like, man, we got to fix the fly problem. Right. So like yeah. they knew about and, it. And yeah. they did have the problem, to be fair, on board was also an issue because yeah. when the ship was parked at Lookout Key, the flies would come and congregate in the, you know, the outdoor food places on the magic, right? So that was an issue on both the magic and the fantasy. So they mitigated that, of course, with covering food and, and yeah. whatnot. So it's, as we understand, and as we've heard, it's less of, it's become less and less of an issue. What we witnessed ourselves was it became less and less of an issue to the point where the third time I was there, the fourth time Brian was there, we saw like maybe two or three flies like around, but not like on anybody's food. And that's sort of normal of what you see at, you know, a barbecue or a castaway. Frankly, at Castaway, you've got the really aggressive the birds. birds to worry about. Yeah, <laughs> so I would say it, it's clear that they've ad they have addressed and are continuing to address the issue. I'm not saying it's not going to be an issue and that it's 100 percent taken care of. I don't know, but I'm sure that they are. You know, I know they're aware of it, and we know and witnessed them improving the issue. Well, to yeah, your don't get me started on the Castaway birds. <laughs> and before I get completely sidetracked, figuring out where I can buy these pheromones for pranks against <laughs> neighbors. I don't like Leslie. Why don't you move us along and get us some lookout and a castaway comparisons? All right. So we've gotten I th what I think are the two biggest negatives out of the way. And those are kind of negatives with asterisks because they have, you know, they have positive sides and they've been improved. So, so that's good. So let's, let's flip it for a little bit and let's talk about some of the positives. Like what were your favorite things about the Island, especially like as compared to Castaway or just as compared to any Disney vacation that you've taken? Like what are like the highlights and the standouts? There? So, so well, look at this merch, you guys. I mean, in this, <laughs> if, I hope you're watching on YouTube right now because I'm wearing the Lookout Key Junkanoo ears. The back of them actually say Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point. I'm also wearing a Junkanoo Pluto themed shirt, the back of which also has a cool Junkanoo pattern, right? So the merchandise is fantastic. They did a really nice job of, you know, at Castaway, the merchandise is, is nice too, but it's very like just Disney beach focused, right? Whereas the merchandise, as Brian kind of t alluded to, the merchandise on Lookout Key is very Bahamian inspired. And these designs actually came from a Bahamian artist. So there's a lot of that, a really like fun infusion of you know a mixture of disney with bahamian culture so that part is it's great in the merchandise it's also great on the island right so you've got these the junkanoo rush which is basically a parade if you think of like 
a carnival type parade. That's kind of, that's its feel. I don't want to, I'm just trying to give something that's more relatable to most Americans, right? So it's a, yeah, it's this parade with costumes and music and, you know, the, the costumes are covered in feathers and all kinds of other random things, honestly. And then the characters come out in their Bahamian wear as well. And so you get this really fun parade. It ends, uh, ends in the Goombay Cultural Center, which is this pavilion where they do different Junkanoo crafting. They show you sort of how people make their costumes and invite you to kind of participate in some of these cultural experiences. So that's, I would say, for me, highlight the other thing is the beach. I mean, I'll, I'll let Brian talk about this more because I feel like the sand is just... You're taking all know. of you my talk highlights. About it. Yeah, Sorry, I, go, you I, talk about it, Brian. I, it, I do want to underscore the cultural aspect because it is unique to look out. They don't have this on Castaway. I got to talk to a couple of the artists who were involved in the design of Lookout, and they are immensely proud of what they were able to accomplish. The music, we talked to, we had a presentation for the musicians involved who wrote some of the music that they wanted for Lookout Key and also adapted some Disney songs into various sort of Bahamian styles and had his students play them and was commenting on the fact that his students are immensely proud that their music is being played with this large audience of people coming to visit the island constantly. Junkanoo, I wanted to underscore, the, the, the costumes are made by the locals. The Junkanoo is done by locals. So like it is not Disney cast members putting on a show. It is the locals celebrating their culture for you with some Disney characters in tow, right? So that cultural aspect cannot be understated. And I think anyone going to look out really needs to invest some time, especially the first time you go, like, go see some of these cultural things. They're very unique. The beaches are unbelievable. And so on one of the cruises that we did, it was like, look out, castaway, look out. And let me tell you, once you've experienced a lookout beach and then you go to a castaway beach, you're like, huh. Like, like the water level is low in some places. Like we didn't even have water. We were in a cabana on cast. We didn't even have water for most of the day on the beach because of the protected cove. No problem at lookout. And in fact, on lookout, I would say a cabana really isn't even like, I don't even think I would get one again. It's, it's, they're beautiful. They're gorgeous. But the family beach was so nice and so gorgeous. The sand is fine. It's soft. If you pick it up, you can see these pink flakes in it from their shells from, you know, the, that have decomposed into the sand. It's not that you're going to walk on a beach that is Barbie pink. If the right lighting, though, especially at the golden hour, we were told, like the beaches do look very pink and you can see it in your hand. The water was gorgeous. It was just like a, un, like an unbelievable beach day. I, I think on Castaway, I usually get to the beach and then I vacillate between the beach and a chair and the cabana and maybe I go back to the water. Like I was in the water almost the whole time that we were at Lookout Key because it was just, it was lovely. It was wonderful. So those beaches are not, not to be missed. Yeah. I think that's, that's a real pro. I think a sleeper. Yeah. One second before you get to your yeah. sleeper, like listening to you guys talk about the Junkanoo and the beach, I almost, you know, we talked about comparing Lookout to Castaway, but it sounds more like we're mm-hmm. comparing Lookout to Aulani. You know, yeah. and I know, oh, that's uh, a great comparison. That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I'm not, I'm not sure when Joe Rody ended up going off the project because, yeah. you know, he left Disney during the pandemic and, yeah. you know, he's back and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, like, when you all were talking, like, that's what it sounded it, like to me. It's keeping the native culture. Yes. Um, beautiful beaches, relax, you know. So, I mean, that that's, that's what I was thinking of. Joe, yeah. that's a great and apt comparison. I totally think that that's true. I think another aspect is, is food, of course. I mean, mm. we always, we always talk about food on our show. I'm sure you guys love to talk about all the different Disney eats. Well, they really upped their game with the food. We are, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that they don't like take away these new offerings because, you know, obviously having more offerings is always more complex from an operational standpoint. And Disney often does things like like we're going to offer you these 10 different things and then you know 6 months later there's only 5 things on the menu so i hope they don't do that because the new food offerings are really really great and i'm not talking about just the french fries cuz <laughs> i have been you know a proponent of why doesn't castaway have french fries for a long time well lookout key has french fries everyone so be, you know be, don't worry about it but even just like 
they had these great like rice dishes that kind of reminded me of like a jambalaya type of a dish, but Caribbean, you know, or flavors, paella. of course. Yeah. Or a paella. Yeah. So there are yeah. re- some really yummy new dishes. They had a spicy chicken, fried chicken sandwich. We haven't seen a fried chicken sandwich on Castaway. Just like some some new things, right, on the menu. Of course, with your old favorites, they've got the same ribs that you have at Castaway. They've got hamburgers and hot dogs. They've got some, you know, pasta salads and things like that as well. But yeah, I think they upped their game with the food offerings for sure. And it's a little bit different. It's not self-serve anymore. And you can't get everything from one bar. So, you know, not self-serve is good because that helped mitigate the fly situation and then not getting getting everything at the same bar. That's just something to know, especially if you have a bigger family, if yeah. people want different things, yeah. then you're going to have to be aware of that. The, the benefit of not having it all at one place is you don't have to stand in line to go through every selection to get your food. Mm-hmm. You can say like, oh, I want the fish or the chicken. That window is probably less subscribed than the hamburgers, to be perfectly honest. Like you can walk up, get your food and sit down i think much more quickly which is which is kind of nice uh, so yeah and i mean and much like any private island experience there's no there's no limit i mean you can go back as many times as you want to so like don't be afraid to ask for more <laughs> so we've touched on i guess the beach the cultural ac- immersion and activities and you've briefly mentioned like some of the sort of more traditional private cruise island kind of things like so so for folks who want more of that experience what is there? What are the activities that like an active kid or something like that will enjoy doing? Yeah. So the yeah. main activities I would say are the rush out gush out, which is a water play area. It is it's on land. It's not out in the water like you see Pelican Plunge at Castaway. It's but it's a, a really cool like it's not a, just a splash pad because splash pad really undersells it. It's like a climbing structure and splash pad and there's two water slides built into it as well so it's really great and adults can go on those water slides let me tell you because i went on the water slides and adults can enjoy the splash pad environment there's all of these like it's kind of like on the fantasy and the dream where you've got like buckets or like dumping water on people and things like that as you're walking by but obviously at a much greater scale because it's on land so i would say that's like the primary play area beyond the beach itself obviously kids are playing on the you know in the water or at the shore's edge and building sandcastles and all that kind of stuff but then there's also a a play area that is it's called the play play it's called the it's called the Play Play Pavilion. Play Play so Pavilion. Like, That's right. Yeah. yeah. They've they've got like cornhole, cornhole in there and it's like family friendly games and things. I think I think in future they may large, kind of expand the offering connect there. Connect for yeah. yeah. And, then that, the, and they also do yeah. a little like fun in the sun bash with the characters there, which is just like a little kind of fun, like little dance party type of a thing a couple of times in the in the day. And then there's the kids club. So the kids club on the island, it is three to 10 years old. So it matches the Oceaneers club and Oceaneers lab. It does not match the ages of, you know, the tweens or the teens in edge and vibe, but it is a secure programmed, you know, area. So you can drop off kids there as well. They also have up their game as opposed to castaway in the sense that they can eat, they have food that they'll serve. They'll serve lunch to the kids in the kids club on the island, which is different. Obviously at, at Castaway, there's no food served in Scuttle's Cove. This one's called Sebastian's Cove. Both of them, of course, Little Mermaid nods. And so our son really enjoyed that. There is kind of a little splash pad area without water slides inside the kids club as well. So our son and his friends spent a couple of hours there actually on our first lookout key day. So those are kind of the primary family activities. There are some activities for, I think, edge and vibe kids, but they're more like meetup type activities. There's two other things that highlight. One is there are some like sports type courts on the island, but the one I remember most is the, they have a Gaga ball court on the island for kids who like to play Gaga ball. They do have some edutainment activities at the cultural center where kids can get involved making their own junk new masks and things like that. And, you know, families can participate. And the whole idea is you can go do that. And then the rush will sort of happen kind of in conjunction with you kind of finishing up the activities. So it's a way to kind of, you know, go and experience it, learn about it, then see it happen. They also have the typical, you know, bike rentals, snorkel rentals. Now, key difference between 
look out and cast away. They didn't sink a bunch of things into the <laughs> into the ocean for you to snorkel and go find. It's more about snorkeling and seeing the natural environment. So that's that's a little bit different. It's also open ocean, which is uh, which is a little bit different experience. They do have buoys out on the ocean that you're not supposed to go past at all. And they have lifeguards out on jet skis, making sure people are respecting that. And then, you know, they have the, the bike rentals and, and all that sort of stuff as well, if you really want to do active. Although, to Joe's point and my point earlier, not quite yet, soon. I think the last thing I'd highlight for families looking for really active things that's, that's different from Castaway in some respects is Disney has committed that they are going to have just a ton of like excursions available on this island. And they believe because the island is connected into, you know, or the, the, the space is connected into an inhabited island, they're going to be able to do more more types of things and types of excursions. And so, you know, they had a snorkeling excursion that we heard through someone who took it was was excellent and that the provider is a scuba provider. And so they're planning to do scuba at Lookout Key, which is something you can't do at Castaway. But there's also a whole host of like cultural things kind of coming to get you out of Disney property and go experience the island of Alutra is how they say it, Alutra. And so, you know, that is unique. You can't get off Castaway and go see a bunch of stuff. You got fishing, you got parasailing, glass bottom boats, you know, that's about it in terms of excursion. So this opens up the possibility for that. I think there are also some golf courses on the island. So they may be opening up some golf excursions at some point as well. So, yeah. This really opens up the possibility, the repeatability of the island, because I think a lot of folks, once they've been to Castaway a couple of times, you feel like you've done it all and seen it all. And it's great and it's familiar and it's a fun time. But I could see as being on as many cruises as you guys have been on, probably <laughs> you've seen every nook and cranny at this point. So that that is exciting. And as a scuba diver myself, that is definitely something that I would I would enjoy d- doing down the road. Maybe not my first trip, but maybe my second or third trip yeah. to the island. So the other the other major thing we haven't talked about, and and then we're gonna have to to call it because I knew with four of us being on, we're gonna have like the longest <laughs> episode ever. But I love it. I love it. But I want to hear about the cabanas because that's something that I know are kind of like increasingly popular, really, really hard to get. And there are two different sets of cabanas. And you mentioned the family ones are right there by the pier. And then the other ones, the adult ones are sort of on the the, the main yeah. part of the island. So yeah. did you guys experience one or both of those? I got to tour all of them, basically. We had a family cabana. So a couple of things about the cabanas. Yes, as you note, so there's, there is an adult section called Serenity Bay. It is adjoins the family beach, but I, I got to put into perspective, these beaches are huge. One point, when you get to the end of the beach, you can go another mile down the beach before you're even off Disney property. So the, they have a huge expanse of beach. The Serenity Bay cabanas kind of sit up over a berm and then back, set back from the beach, kind of in the Serenity Bay area. They have their Serenity Bay barbecue over there. They have a, their own bar. The, the style and build quality of the two cabanas, they're identical. They're gorgeous. They look much more solid than anything that they have on Castaway Wiki. They have more grand cabanas available on the island than on Castaway Key to support those larger groups. Family cabanas are closest to the ship, and that that is the only beach that actually has a view of the ship from Lookout Key. And so there's you know an expanse of those uh, going down the beach again with two. I think it's two grand cabanas, maybe even three. No, it's four grand cabanas, four. Brian. Yeah. It's one and two, and then I believe it's 20 and 21 20 and are 21, all yeah. grand cabanas. Yeah. And one also happens to be an accessible. So one cabana one and cabana three are both handicapped accessible cabanas as well. And I believe there are one or two handicapped accessible cabanas over on Serenity Bay Beach, although I, yeah. I did and not they, get to see that area. They have their own food location over there. It does serve some unique offerings. They had like a steak. They had crab legs. They had shrimp. They had scooped ice cream sundaes at their food location. The, I think the, the, the they're beautiful. I think the drawback of the family cabanas, especially for a first-time visitor, is they're on the opposite side of the island from all the action. Now, we were able to, a couple of times, get a golf cart to take us from the cabanas to the other side of the island and then tram back, but that was a little consistent toward the end. Some of them would just take you to the tram stop, and then you'd tram over the other side of the island. I think for a first stop, honestly, head to the family beach, check it out, get your bearings, see some of the cultural stuff, you know, do some of the activities over there, experience the, the original barbecues over there, and then maybe a second trip to look out. If you really want a cabana, try one of them then because they, yeah. they are fairly disconnected from 
the island and you can there's no there's like a small little kiosk of merchandise on that side of the island the main store is on the opposite side of the island so that was another thing that you know people wanted to go buy merch and they it was a it was a trek to get over there and do that yeah the one caveat i would say is it's only an eight minute tram ride so you can leave your cabana walk a you know basically a block distance to where the tram stop is get on the tram and then you're over at Disney Tings, which is the shop, and basically all of the family, the family beach area stuff. So it's not hard to go to. It's just when you're ensconced in a cabana, you don't want to leave that cabana. So I think yeah. that's the that's really the issue. But so I would agree with Brian's recommendation. Like if you're a first timer going to Lookout Key, forego even trying for a cabana. Much less the fact that obviously they're very difficult to get unless you're staying in concierge. But you know, forego the cabana, spend time on either the family beach or Serenity Bay Beach, and have a wonderful day enjoying all of the activities there. And maybe a second trip, then consider you know trying to get a cabana at either Serenity Bay or at the the family beach. And they're, they're lovely. They're really wonderful. They they have some amenities that don't exist in at Castaway. For example, not all of them, but some of them have a sink in the cabana. They have really like nicer modular furniture. They have a keypad, a, a, like an iPad kind of a thing that you can order stuff on. So food, not food, sorry, alcohol and chips. And so, you know, there's just some amenities that, that exist in the yeah. new cabanas that don't exist at Castaway. There, there is, there is one right. other thing before we wrap up, Joe, if you'll permit me. I just want to cover one other quick thing that was a bit of salacious news around the island that we hinted at at the front. Uh, a lot of people have come out. Uh, there was some news about a family that was able to visit the island before anyone else. <laughs> people saying, oh, there's all these people wandering around the island that aren't supposed to be there. I, wanted, I just wanted to let li uh, your listeners know the island is not fully – or the, sorry, the destination is not fully private. That said, the only people who are supposed to be there are local Bahamians who can buy a little – or a, a, a small amount of day passes that Disney makes available – that's it. So this is not an island where you're going to see a boat, a party boat pull up and everyone get off and start partying on your beach. Disney has said the commitment they made to the Bahamians is they would allow them to use on a day basis some of the amenities uh, in the private area that they own. Those are limited. It is not it is not going to be like you're suddenly carnival pulls up and everybody's getting off at Disney's Island. So just wanted to put that out there because that was that was some news that was covered pretty extensively and i think poorly for a while so <laughs> Car carnival catching strays so you've i'll give you three sentences brian before we get to our wrap up question i cut you off about what you thought was a sleeper hit what were you gonna say oh it was the excursions know, when it was the excursions it was the excursions yeah i think the excursions are gonna end up being a sleeper hit yeah. right now they're pretty limited but i think they're gonna get a lot more all right so what we would love to talk about to kind of wrap everything up is who would you recommend going to Lookout Key? Like, is this, do you feel like it's more for, I, I know this is like an impossible question to answer because I get this question all the time, right? Like, which ship should I start with? You know, I don't, I don't know if it really matters. But if you could somehow pinpoint it, like, are we talking first time Disney cruisers should go here? Long time Disney cruisers? Who do you think the Lookout Key experience, the Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point? Excuse me. Now everyone's gonna get mad at me for my proper <laughs> Disney branding, but you know who that's do you why think we just it call it Lookout Key. <laughs> suits point. the best. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm gonna say active cruisers, right? So I'm gonna say this is a this is a destination for more active people who don't mind a little bit of a walk to get to some really great things. So what that really I think puts into perspective is. Maybe the youngest cruisers is a little bit far to walk unless you're bringing a stroller. So this is a good tip for for trips with tykes. Bring that stroller if you've got young kids because it is a bit of a schlep to get from point A to point B in several places on the island. And the mobility challenged folks, I, I will say it's right now there there are golf carts available there are things that will help those with mobility challenges but it it's not a full steam operation quite yet on that front and so i noticed that the wheelchair the beach wheelchair chairs are not out like they are at castaway so 
there are a few things that are just not quite ready for those who have mobility challenges. It's not to say you aren't going to be able to get to the beach. There are ramps and whatnot in certain spots, but it isn't going to be as seamless as it is at Castaway quite yet. So that's what I would say for now. Brian, what would you say as far as first time versus repeat? I'm I'm going to say Lookout is for everybody. I I prefer Lookout Key to Castaway Key. Castaway Key is a great destination. Don't get me wrong. I agree with what Sam has said in some of her comments, but I honestly think if you, I would not choose my cruise based on Lookout or Castaway. I think either destination is fabulous. I prefer Lookout to Castaway. I will say this. I will answer the question in the reverse, which is who is it not for? If you were a diehard originalist, don't change anything that Disney has done and you're showing up (laughs) expecting a clone of Castaway Key don't go to Lookout. Like you're just going to be disappointed in the same way there were a bunch of people who were disappointed when they got on the wish. You, you got to be open to this thing is different. It's new. It's not meant to be a clone. It's meant to accomplish something different. And it's, it's still a work in progress. Castaway Key is a fully finished island after however many years it's been open. This place has been open for like a month or six weeks. And they're working they're continuing to work they will continue to expand so this is something that will age and get better over time but if you're one of those just originalist people like just just don't subject yourself to the 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 horror (laughs) of spending the money on a disney cruise line vacation to complain about it like just go on the magic of the wonder the fantasy the dream head to castaway and you'll be great but i think lookout is going to open up like a whole new world of possibilities for for disney cruise line and i think it's gonna be pretty fabulous Got it. Wise words, excellent perspective as always. And as you know, we always close our episodes out with a Disney do or don't. So what Disney Cruise Line related Disney do or don't do you guys have for us? I'm going to give the one I've given a hundred times now on your show. (laughs) I am on a mission. Stop rope dropping the restaurants on Disney Cruise Line. Have a drink, wait for the line to die down and then go in. Just just enjoy yourself. This is supposed to be a relaxing vacation and it's turned into like parks on, on the ocean. And I, I just need it to stop. So anyway, but don't rope drop things. You don't have to do that. <laughs> That's I great tip. Follow, Perfect, yeah. right? I, I will follow up on that. I, I noticed that that was happening on our last cruise on The Wish. And I will like... I'll tell you exactly what went through my mind. We're always the last people to finish. And we generally do second seating, even though our kids are younger. And so we're the last people to finish. And so we're getting out of dinner at like 9.45, 10 p.m. or whatever. So I was like, "Let me." these people seem crazy. No offense if you like to rope drop. You know, <laughs> everyone do what you want. But to me, it seems crazy for my family to rope drop this meal. But let me try and see whether it makes it does not make a difference the <laughs> bottom line is our family is just super slow doesn't matter if we start early or get in there late we're like the last ones out there anyway so i love you know, it it doesn't, enjoy, doesn't make an appreciable di- difference in your time enjoy that mickey bar joe come on yeah yeah so well thank you all so much for coming on can you tell us one more time where people can find you if they want to see your disney cruise content yeah, sure. You can find us on social media everywhere. We're DCL Duo. The one exception is Instagram, where we're DCL underscore Duo. Uh, we're, we're on all the podcasting platforms. So if you just go search DCL Duo, you will find us. Thank you again so much, Brian and Sam, for coming on. We really appreciate you sharing your experience about Lookout Key. Other than that, Leslie, thank you for taking the time to talk to me, and I will see you Booking your first cruise to look at. Oh, wait, we booked it already, Leslie. We got it. <laughs> <laughs>